Hello and welcome to the latest update of the Sugarcane Rainfall Outlook for the North Sugarcane District. First, we'll be covering recent rainfall amounts recorded so far in May, then the forecast rainfall over the short term. We'll then look at the June and July rainfall outlooks in detail before a short summary of the longer term winter rainfall outlooks and climate drivers. And climate drivers. During May, we've seen rainfall totals of around 80 to 120 millimetres through the Tully and Innisfail regions, with Bingle Bay the highest in the region so far with nearly 160 millimetres. Rainfall totals decreased to around 15 to 30 millimetres through Ingham, with a maximum of 46 millimetres at Lucinda, and around further decreasing around 10 to 20 millimetres in the upper Herber catchment. Month to date rainfall totals have been well below average so far, as shown on the right, with most locations receiving only 40 to 60% of their median monthly rainfall totals for May, with those percentages dropping to around 20% or lower further south through the Ingham and broader Herbert catchment. Looking ahead to the short term forecast, and here we have the three day rainfall accumulation totals from this Friday to Sunday on the left, Monday to Wednesday in the middle panel, and Thursday to Saturday next week on the right. A southeasterly surge is currently enhancing some light stream shower activity through the wet tropics. That southeasterly flow will ease on Saturday, with showers largely clearing over the weekend and early next week. A significantly cooler air mass will reach the tropics on Sunday, and coupled with clearer skies, we expect a drop in temperatures during Sunday and Monday, with forecast minimums around 6 to 10 degrees below average for May. Temperatures will gradually warm from midweek, and another southeasterly surge is expected later in the week, with another round of showers for the region. Here we show the chance of exceeding 25 millimetres of rainfall over the next fortnight, broken down into week-long periods. North of Cardwell, up to Innisfail, we're looking at a 25 to 50% chance of exceeding 25 millimetres for each weekly period. And south of Cardwell, there's a less than 10% chance of seeing 25 millimetres over both weekly periods. Into the whole of June outlook, and an average chance of exceeding the June median rainfall is predicted for Cardwell and North, while further south there is a low, around 30 to 40% chance of exceeding the June median rainfall. The model skill at this time of year is fair to poor, typically getting it correct around 50 to 55% of the time, and dropping below 50% around the Innisfail region. This translates into about an equal chance of seeing rainfall close to the historical median for the month around Ingham and slightly higher odds of exceeding the median rainfall around the Innisfail region, as we can see from this comparison of the 50% chance of at least chart on the left with the historical median map on the right. Expanding on the possible June rainfall totals here, with the high chance on the left, 75% chance of exceeding, or three out of four times, we can expect to see at least this much through the month of June, and the lower chance totals on the right, the 25% chance, or one out of four times, we would expect to see these totals exceeded in the region during June. Moving on to the month of July, and a slightly wetter signature is evident on the rainfall outlook over northern parts, with a moderate to slightly higher chance, 60 to 65%, of exceeding the July median rainfall, while a neutral signature can be seen south of Cardwell. The model shows improved skill during July compared to June and is typically correct around 50 to 65% of the time. This translates into about an equal or slightly higher chance of seeing rainfall close to the historical median for the month, as we can see from this comparison of the 50% chance of at least chart on the left and the historical median map on the right. Expanding further on the possible July rainfall totals here, with the high chance on the left, the 75% chance of exceeding, or three out of four times, we can expect to see at least this month through the month of July, and the lower chance totals on the right, the 25% chance, or one out of four times, we would see these totals exceeded in the region. And a quick snapshot of the rainfall outlook for winter months through June to August as a whole, and we see higher, around 60 to 70% odds, of exceeding the median rainfall across winter over the region north of Cardwell, with a more neutral signal further south. The modelling is typically correct 55 to 65% of the time through this forecast period. So what's driving this? We're currently in an El Nino watch, which is a 50% chance of El Nino forming later this year, around double the normal likelihood. In recent months, we have observed eastern tropical Pacific warm waters warming, but we have seen little atmospheric response yet. All international climate models indicate it is very likely Pacific Ocean temperatures will reach El Nino thresholds during the winter. However, an atmospheric response is also required for an El Nino to be declared by the Bureau. El Nino is normally associated with lower than average winter and spring rainfall over eastern Australia. However, unusually warm water over the northern Coral Sea is expected to be a stronger climate influence over far north Queensland, increasing the odds of exceeding the median rainfall over the winter period for northern parts of the district. 
This translates into about an equal chance or slightly higher of seeing rainfall close to the historical median for the winter across the north and similar values to the historical median to the south, as we can see from this comparison of the 50% chance of at least child on the left with the historical median map on the right. That's it for this update. As always, check the latest forecast and warnings on the Bureau's website or the BOM Weather app, and be sure to send any feedback through to agriculture at bom.gov.au. We'd love to hear from you. See you next Outlook. Thanks for listening.